All right, this is question two on the 2012 AP BC Calculus exam. I'm doing this on paper because you can't confine me to your methods, DRM, and also EduCreations doesn't have an option to put sparkles in the video. Check this out. Oh, Navi. All right, anyway, let's see what we've got. It says some things here, but nobody really cares about that until you actually look at what you're trying to find. So let's look at part A. It's asking if the horizontal movement of the particle is to the left or to the right at time two, and telling us to find the slope of the path of the particle at the same time. Now, since I have absolutely no idea what that means, let's go back and actually read the introduction to the problem. Basically, we got a particle here that's moving along a curve, and we're given its initial position and the derivative of its x and y positions. Now, if we're trying to find the horizontal movement of the particle, we're going to look at dx dt. It says here that dx dt is the square root of t plus 2 over e to the t power. Um, now, what we're going to do is, because we're trying to find it at t equals 2, we're just going to plug in t equals 2 to this uh, situation right here. So we get 2 over e squared. This value is positive. This means that it's going to be going in the rightward direction because typically positive values indicate rightwards or for a dy dt it would indicate upwards. So this means the particle is moving to the right. But we're not done with part A yet. It asks us to find the slope of the particle's path at t equals 2. The slope of the path would be dy dx. This equals dy dt over dx dt. So now that we have that, plug in t equals 2 to both of those, and then you should get an answer that is 3.055. Now we move on to part b. If we're trying to find the x-coordinate of the particle's position at t equals 4, we have to integrate dx dt to find our position function. Fizunction. Is that a word? We have to integrate dx dt to find our position function. The final formula for finding the result is this. We have to take the initial position of the particle into account, and our initial position in the x direction is 1 at t equals 2. So we will say 1 plus the integral of dx dt t plus 2 over e to the t dt from time 2 to 4 gives us an answer of 1.253. Part C needs some basic knowledge of vectors. Basically, if we're trying to find the speed of the particle, we will find the resultant of our x and y vectors. And this involves drawing somewhat of a triangle. This is our y, and this is our x. The resultant is right here. To find the hypotenuse from the x and y vectors, we do the Pythagorean theorem. In this scenario, our x vector is the square root of t plus 2 over e to the t, and our y vector is sine squared t. We get that the square root of our x vector squared plus our y vector squared equals our resultant. And the rest of the problem is easy. You just plug in t equals 4 to the entire equation, and you get that the resultant is 0.575. Now when it asks us for the acceleration vector, we don't really have to do anything complicated. Acceleration is the derivative of speed, so just derive both given equations and you'll get the acceleration in both directions. We really don't have to do anything complicated. So just derive both the given equations at t equals 4 using your calculator, and you should get a very easy, simple, quick answer, negative 0.041 comma 0.989. Part D asks us for the distance the particle travels from time 2 to 4, so we're going to do a similar thing to part C and use the resultant of the displacement. But to get the displacement, we need to integrate, so we will do the integral from 2 to 4 of the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared. Use your calculator to do the heavy lifting, and then you should get 0.651 as a final answer to that problem. Hooray, you just finished an AP Calculus free response problem. More sparkles. Burn, burn, burn. Actually, no, you didn't do it. I did it. You sat there and watched me do it. Close this video and actually do a problem, because watching this basically helped you fail by wasting your time.